welcome to lecture 3. Um, before I begin, uh, are there any questions from what we did in the last lecture? I think we essentially ended up proving the art gallery theorem. So, any confusion, any doubts? Okay. So, let me let me proceed with uh, a new problem. It is it's a fairly simply stated problem and it may not uh, sound particularly uh, useful. Uh, nevertheless, you know, it, I will use that problem. Yeah. Yes. One is, uh, if the art gallery is a three dimensional object, uh, so what will be, I mean, uh, what will be the number of, uh, is there anything known about the number of uh, Okay. So, the question is that if the art gallery problem is posed in three dimensions, what happens? So, clearly the problem becomes even harder. I mean, so there is no question of having a fast polynomial time solution. Uh, if you are asking about essentially the results about, you know, do we have a tight bound like this one we have, I must confess that I do not know. And I have, I doubt that there is any such tight result in the three dimension. Another question is, suppose the uh, art gallery is like a, I mean, it is like orthogonal, like a normal gallery. Yeah, that is how I pose the problem as a orthogonal polygon, simple polygon. Initially, I pose the problem like an orthogonal simple polygon. Yeah, if that is the case, then in that case, is there, uh, the results are like, in fact, is that any better? No, the results remain the same. Um, no, no, let me let me let me retract that. So the results uh, may not remain the same uh, for the simple reason that the lower bound construction that is you need at least so many. Uh, so okay, I let I'll take it back. So um, the result would differ by a small amount. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. If it is a linear polygons. Okay, so coming back to this new problem that I want to discuss today. Uh, so let me just give some kind of motivation before I pose the problem. So, it is like this, you know, uh, suppose, uh, you know, uh, so people do own, you know, shares from different companies, right. And, uh, you know, the shares are priced, uh, you know, according to the market and every day the price changes, okay. So, suppose there are, you know, 10 kinds of shares available, okay, and there are many people who own such shares. And the pricing, uh, the the cost of the sh price of the shares uh, change every day, uh, but at on any specific day, depending on the price of the share, some person can claim to be the richest person, right? Depending on you know what the share, how many shares he has, how many share values, uh, what is the share value, and so on and so forth. Uh, so then, uh, if some person is is the richest person. One, one certain day, the, the next day again, you know, because of the change in share prices, you know, someone else could become the richest person. Okay. Now, given a population, okay, if we want to keep track of the fact that who are the potential richest person, okay, what would you do? Uh, so, what we do in the sense that, uh, you know, who are the potentially richest person? So, how would you approach this problem? So, I am not trying to do any prediction, I am only trying to get a, a set of persons who could be the richest person on some day depending on some values of the shares. Uh, we would uh, probably look at uh, what their current status, current uh, revenue is, uh, their assets are and what can be the changes in future, so on the day we want how much they can. Okay, okay let me give you an example, okay, suppose there are this, you know, four persons, you know, P1, P2, P3, P4, okay. And let us say that only two kinds of shares, okay, share 1 and share 2, all right. So, person 1 uh, owns, let us say, you know, 100 shares of this and let us say 50 shares of this, okay. Person 2 owns maybe 120 shares of this and maybe 30 shares of this. Okay, person 3 owns, uh, let us say, you know, 90 shares of type 1 and let us say 40 shares of type 2. Okay, person 4 owns, let us say, 115 shares of type 1 and 20 shares of type 2. Okay. Now, the value of a share is unpredictable. 
let us say you do not know on you know you cannot even predict the future for future okay. so if you if you have this kind of data if you have this sort of data then can you say anything about who could be the potentially the richest people hmm? so you are saying that p1 and p2 why are you excluding p3 and p4 So, whatever be the price of the share on a certain day, P1 because it has more shares of both types than P3. Okay. So, that person, you know, whatever be the share, will always kind of uh, be richer than the person 3. Okay. And likewise, the number of shares owned by P2 of each type exceeds the number of shares owned by P4 of each type, and therefore, on any particular day, whatever be the value of the share. P2 will always be richer than P4. So, therefore, P4 and P3 are certainly not among the potential richest person, only P1 and P2. And depending on the price of the share, maybe on a certain day P1 is richer than P2 or vice versa. Okay. But then certainly P3 and P4 cannot claim that position on any, any day because they are they have fewer shares of any type than another person in the set. Okay. So, this kind of relation. Okay, so, I have, I have discussed only with respect to two uh, kinds of shares. So, I can uh, um, you know if, if I if I draw this uh, you know in a, in a uh, you know is, is, is a graph. Okay. Um, so, let us say this is share 1 and this is share 2. Okay. Uh, so, let us say some you know, 10, 20, 30. Let us say about 100, okay. and here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, let us say up to 50. Right. So, I can actually plot this. Okay. So, person 1 okay, has 100 uh, shares of type 1 and 50 of type 2. So, person P1 is a point here. Okay. Uh, person 2 has, you know, let us say x coordinate 120 and y coordinate 30. Right. So, somewhere here and 20. Okay. Person P3 has 90 as x coordinate okay, and 40, right. so it will be somewhere here. Okay. The P4 uh, has 115 okay, and only 20, right. so just a moment. So, then no, 115. So, I am sorry, so this was incorrect, Thir that was 30, right. This is 30. So, 100 and P2 is 120 and 30. So, it is about here. This is P2. This is P1. This is uh, P3. And P4 is uh, 115 and Twenty, right? So somewhere here. This P four. Okay, sorry. The example says that all the points are clustered on this end. Now, geometrically, you know what is happening is P. If you look at P one and P three, okay, uh, both coordinates of P three are smaller than P one, right? And both coordinates of P four are smaller than P two. Right. So, this relation where both coordinates are smaller, we have a name for it. So, we say it dominates. Okay. So, we say P i dominates P j x i is greater than x j and y i is greater than y j. Okay. Now, there is of course, this uh, thing that what happens if it is equal to, let me ignore it for the time being, you know, let us not get into that. It, it can also be taken care of with appropriate definitions. So, let us say we are only have this inequalities. Okay. So, uh, only if it, so p i dominates p j only if and only if both coordinates of uh, the ith point dominates the 
uh, dominates the co coordinates or is greater than the coordinates of the other point. Right? And this of course, you know, uh, this definition uh, extends to higher dimensions where you can have uh, in a three dimensions. So, depending on how many kinds of shares it has, this d kinds of shares go to d dimensions to express the same information. All right? So, then what are we, what is this problem about? So, this problem is about okay, the following that given a set of endpoints. Okay, so in the special case in on a plane, otherwise in di in d dimensions, in d dimensions, we want to identify. Let us say call this call this set uh, S. Identify. Let us say. Uh, S prime subset of S such that for all points in S prime, okay, there does not exist any point Q belongs to S such that Q dominates P. Right. So those points uh, form this subset S prime. So those that set of points. So in the in the given example, you know, uh, P one and P two basically uh, comprise that set S prime. So P because P one and P two uh, they are not dominated by any other point. Right. So so this is what we are calling this S prime and the the name for this set s prime so s prime is called the maximal set of points um no oh, it is not dominated by any other point right so why are you saying only s? So, the question is that why have I chosen q to be in s? It cannot be dominated by any point in the set, not just s prime, uh, sorry s minus s prime, you know I, I cannot let it dominate it by another, another point, no way. So, a maximal point is the one that is not dominated by any point in the set right. And the problem is the algorithmic problem is to given a set of n points, find the set of maximal points. So, problem find the set of maximal points. So, that is the problem, okay. that is the problem we would like to solve algorithmically and you know of course, as uh, with, with the algorithm as fast as possible. So, from the definition of the problem, what would be the straightforward solution? So, the straightforward solution as someone just pointed out is n square or whatever n choose 2 y, I can take every pair of points okay, and find out if it uh, if one point is dominated by the other, any point that is dominated by another point cannot be a candidate for the maximal and it gets thrown out. So, any point that survives all these tests okay, uh, will be maximal and clearly at least one point must be maximal, right. The point having the highest x coordinate, points having the highest y coordinate, those points must be the and it, it can be the same point, right. So, uh, what I am saying is that essentially your set could be like all the points are here. So, this is the only maximal point, okay. that is one extreme. Another could be that you know I have uh, things like this, right. So, it is kind of uh, looks like a staircase. So, all these points must be maximum because they are not dominated by each other, right. And any other point inside this staircase, you know, not maximum clearly. 
So this is this also the structure of the solution, right? I mean, it's like a falling staircase in the increasing, increasing x direction. Just just look at it carefully. So, you have any doubts that any any other point inside the staircase must have must be dominated by at least one point, must have both x and y coordinates smaller than some other point in the set. So, okay, so for example, this point. Okay, so this point and this point. You know, clearly the the x coordinate of this point and the y coordinate of this point is smaller than x and y coordinate. And moreover, the x and y coordinate of this point is also smaller than x and y coordinate of this point. So, a point may be dominated by more than one point, but certainly it is dominated by at least one point. And none of these points in the staircase can be dominated by each other because it is in the increasing y direction. Uh, sorry, x direction and falling y direction. So, this is the structure of the final solution okay. and we want to essentially identify this and the, the straightforward simple solution is take every two point, compare their x and y coordinates and if one is dominated by the other, just throw it out. Okay. So, that is n choose 2. Well, that is okay, but you know maybe we can do better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, you you know it. I, I think you knew the solution because you have seen this problem before, right? If I'm not wrong, <laughs> it's obvious. Okay. Fine. It may be obvious. Okay. Um, so okay. Let me iterate the the one proposed solution, which seems to be a, a nice and fast solution. So mm, you know the is that you know you sort the points along. along x axis okay and then starting from the point with the largest x coordinate okay, we move left i.e. In, um, in decreasing value values of x. Okay. So, this is what we, we do. So, so, in this particular case you know so, suppose this is the highest x coordinate okay. and there are many other points um, there is a point here and a point here. So, what we do is you know from here we this is the next point that we must consider in the decreasing y uh, x coordinate. Now, because we are considering them in the decreasing x coordinate, we know that any point that we encounter later must is already dominated on the x coordinate. Okay, it now is a question of whether or not the y coordinate is also smaller than this point. So, if it is so, okay, we discard this point. So, this point gets discarded. Okay, then we move further and we come here. Okay, so this has a smaller x coordinate than than uh, than one, okay. Uh, let us say this is two, this is three. So, uh, but three has a larger y coordinate, so three survives. And three will always survive because all other points have smaller x coordinates, so no other point can dominate three. Okay. So this is the way we progress. And so, what is the information that we require to maintain? So when we are here. Okay. I know that this point has a smaller x coordinate than all the points we have seen so far. Okay. So, the only thing that we need to find out if there is any of these points that we have seen till now has a larger y coordinate, which means that the only information that we need to maintain is the largest y coordinate of the points scanned so far. Okay. We are scanning from, from in the decreasing x direction. Okay. So, this is easily done. right? So, starting from the point the largest we moved and maintain the value of the largest y coordinate. Okay. 
so if the y coordinate so okay so let's call it something say y max okay if uh, for the current point p x sorry y of p is less than y max then p is not maximal else p is maximal that's all and what is the running time of this well in step 1 we sort okay so sorting will take whatever time it does let us say n log n if you are using comparison trees so this will take n log n and then the step 2 which is the iterative step you know we we look at every point one after the other what is the information that we, we maintain just the maximum y coordinate y max y max y max have to may have to be updated so in fact i missed out something here so else if y else p is maximal okay which means that we must update so y max okay must now be set to the the uh, y coordinate of p because that exceeds the previous y max so the only change that we have to make is this this one value okay so it's basically constant amount of work for every iteration for and for therefore for all the endpoints okay we need only a total of so for each point additional order 1 okay implying total order n so the whole thing is actually dominated by this n log n. So the first step is the dominating step. I mean, in terms of algorithmic complexity, and the second step uh, is only linear time. So if someone had given you these points in a sorted manner, then you would only need order n time, linear. Okay, so nothing can be better than linear. But of course, the first step is n log n. Can you do better than this? Unsorted points. Okay. So, answering a question like can you do better okay, uh, means that we have to somehow argue against all possibilities right you know all, uh, all, uh, all the intelligent people in the world right you know someone says that you know I can design a, a linear time algorithm you know then I have to somehow be able to argue without even knowing what that person knows no impossible you cannot uh, design anything faster than something. Okay. Which is essentially, a, you know, can we do better? Means we have to prove a formal lower bound, right? Can we do better? Well, so some kind of lower bound argument is necessary, right? Which must hold against all possible, you know. Uh, possible strategies of designing algorithms. Right? So, for this particular thing let me give you a an argument that we cannot do better than n log n. Okay. Mm. So, here is the idea. Okay. So, the idea of, so this is the notation for big omega is the notation for lower bound. right? So, uh, so we will construct some kind of an input. Okay. So, construct an input uh, x i y i i between 1 and n such that x i plus y i 
is some constant c, a large enough constant. Now, what does it mean in this particular input? Okay, how many maximal points? So, I will just say this is Well, actually not, let me not even bother about large enough you know everything could be let us say between 0 and 1 that is also fine. So, any any constant would do I do not require this how many maximal points are there all points are maximal right because from this equation okay, uh, x i plus y i is constant if we take so for any pair uh, p i p j okay either x i is greater than x j and y i is less than y j okay or the other way around or x i is less than x j and y i is greater than y j. So, no point dominates another point essentially and therefore, all points are maximal right. So, if we have if we design an algorithm I mean whatever be the algorithm for maximal that algorithm should be able to detect this condition if it is the correct algorithm it should produce the final answer ok. Now, to produce the final answer it should have been able to conclude that for all pairs of points ok either this is true either this is true or this is true. What does it mean? It means that it actually must gather information enough information about all points. So, that it knows the is not the answer whether you know x i is greater than x j or x i is smaller than x j. Because without figuring out this it, it, it will not know whether or not it dominates. So, at the end of the algorithm whatever be the algorithm for maximal ok, the algorithm should have gathered this information or deduced this information which means that we have enough information by which we can compare any pair of points and therefore, with that information we should be able to sort and therefore, the lower bound for sorting should apply here. Okay. So, so, at the end of the algorithm of any algorithm basically E, we can sort without any further comparisons. It does not mean that you know every pair of points have been compared, but there should be enough information in the end so that if you pick up any two point, we should know either condition 1 is satisfied or condition 2 is satisfied, which means that now with this information one can sort. So, it cannot be faster than sorting i the lower bound of sorting applies. So, this even this simple algorithm okay, is actually optimal because we cannot 
do anything better than sorting and we know that whatever is the lower bound for sorting in whatever model. So, in the comparison model the lower bound for sorting is n log n. So, this is also n log n. So, I will just mention one word about the model. Okay. We have not quite actually looked into the model that we are using. Okay. I mentioned in the first lecture that uh, we are dealing with real numbers okay. and uh, therefore, we are actually also we have to deal with real valued functions and so on and so forth. In the normal model of computation, we are only dealing with you know some comparisons, you know perhaps some addition, subtraction, so on and so forth. But normally, you analyze only with respect to comparisons. You know, to do this kind of geometry computing, okay, we have to we have to resort to other kinds of arithmetic operations, which may be even uh, if you want to find the distance, you may have to compute uh, uh, compute the square root, okay, because the the L2 norm, which is the you know root of the sum of squares, requires us to not only multiply but also take square root. Some of these problems presumably could also depend on something like angle computations. You know, we don't we won't rule it out at this stage. Okay. Right now, I don't want to get too much into the model of computation, uh, but you must keep in mind that the uh, you know the uh, the the available um, uh, operations. You know are you know most of these uh, basic uh, you know arithmetic uh, real valued functions. Right. So, what exactly we will use I will come to that probably much later in the course, but I will just I am just making this this point. Okay. Um, all right. So, this uh, is a optimal algorithm for finding maximal. Right. Let me also mention another possibility that uh, uh, be, because I said you know the techniques that we have learned in other algorithm course can also be applied. So, suppose we have to apply divide and conquer to this problem. Right. Uh, so, how would the divide and conquer work? So, let us say divide and conquer. You normally would divide into two parts, okay, solve the problem in the two parts and then combine them somehow. Okay. So, in this particular case, you know we have a set of points in the plane. What would be a natural way of dividing this problem into two parts? Okay. Okay. So, let us go with this that you know uh, we project the points on the x axis. I am not drawing all everything, but no, some of them, and then after the projection, okay, we can find the median point, and that will partition the point into two parts. So that's a clean way of partitioning. That uh, there is, you know, so one part is completely on one side, the other part is on another side. Okay. Of course, when you do something like merge sort, you don't do this. You know, you actually partition in any arbitrary way. I can just take any n over two points and take the complement of those n over two points here. This way of partitioning is actually finding by finding the median. I'm actually finding a kind of a separator where all the points on one half have larger x coordinates than the other half. Okay, and because this is a, this is for maximal, as we had seen in the previous approach, that it helps us, you know, to figure out, you know, if some point can be a candidate for maximal. For instance, all the points in the left half. Okay, so suppose uh, this is the median. Okay, then we know for sure that the points on left half cannot dominate any point on the right half because they have smaller x coordinates right so then if i am trying to solve this by divide and conquer okay i find the maximal on right half i find the maximal on the left half okay which would look like let us say some staircase here some staircase on this side another staircase on this side right and somehow we need to combine the staircase, okay. and we know that the staircase on the right must survive. Right? If it is maximal on the on the right half, it has to survive. It's only the points on the left half that may be dominated by some points on the on the right side, and that's also easy to figure out exactly which one by just observing that you know if you have these two staircases. This is linearly separated staircases, okay? Because there is a separation between them. Then, uh, 
all I need to do is find out what is the maximum for any point okay if the maximum y coordinate to the on the right half okay is larger than this one right. So, that means basically I just extend this and all this is not maximal and anything above this is maximal. So, how do we find this thing? Simple right find the largest y coordinate among largest which is actually this point we know that it is a falling staircase and then you compare the y uh, coordinate of all these points in the left half okay, and filter them out. So, how much time does it take? Order n right. So, then if I have to write a recurrence then I can write the time to compute maximal of n points is 2 times the time to compute maximum of n over 2 points okay, plus big O of n this is your very familiar recurrence. Okay. I am not writing the, um, the terminating condition and that implies T of n equals so that is another n log in algorithm right. So, n log n is a lower bound and we cannot do better okay. fine, but let me scroll back to this situation. What happens here? The point there is only one point that is maximal right. So, once you have found this point which is the maximal point when you compare this point with any other point it dominates every other point and they go out gone right. So, if I have this algorithm that I compare I, I find the y coordinate the maximum y coordinate okay, and when I do my pairwise comparisons I always do my pairwise comparison starting with the maximum x coordinate okay. and then when I finish this then I take the next point and then do the comparisons from that. So, if I run that algorithm it is an n, it's an n square algorithm potentially, but in this particular situation when there is only one maximal how much time will it take to run just n comparisons or n minus com 1 comparisons will suffice to eliminate all other points right. So, then we have beaten the beaten the n log n bound at least in this one special case. So, of course, you can say that you know this is only for this one special case, but it does not hold in the general case, you are true, but with this observation does it give us any hope that there is any further scope of improvement and how. Okay, so, what I am saying is that faster algorithm when there is only one maximal point okay this is what i just pointed out okay you can actually extend the same argument and say that you know we can probably design a faster algorithm when there are even two maximal points perhaps by some kind of a similar argument right? because with one point you eliminate everything you pick up the next maximal point and with that you may have eliminated everything else so again order and you done so, what it amounts to saying is that or so what would you deduce from there I mean what what is the lesson that we can take from this. Or just not just one I am saying when there are few maximal points okay, then there is probably potential for improvement okay. and of course, we do not know initially whether there are one maximal point or there is one or more than one or even maybe all the inner maximum points, but it seems to depend on what is basically what we can call the output size okay. Output size may be crucial but then I do not know what the output size is you know you give me a set of points how the hell do I know that how many points are going to be maximal okay. I, I if I knew that there is only, only one uh, maximal point 
you know, I could run this algorithm by pick, picking up the maximum y coordinate and running that algorithm and getting it, but I have no idea whether how many maximum points are going to be there. Right? So, here is another idea, okay, another algorithm, let us say. And what I am going to do is the divide and conquer that we just designed, I am going to modify it a little bit. Okay, the divide and conquer, what did I do? We took all the points projected on the uh, on the x coordinate, you know, found the median point so that we could divide it into two parts, found the maximal points on the right half, found the maximum point on the left half, and uh, then we merged them, and the merging was very simple. Now, instead of actually finding out the all the, the maximal points on the left half, which seem to be kind of uh, uh, ev you know a wasted work, because some of these points are not maximal in the final output, right. Even before I compute these maximal points on the left half, if I could somehow find a way of filtering them out. Okay. then I would not have to actually do it recursively. See the reason we got this n log n kind of thing is because we had to write down 2 times n over 2. We solved the right half recursively, we solved the left half recursively. Now, what I am saying is that instead of actually solving the left half recursively, okay, if we can somehow find out you know what the maximum point on the right half is and just use that to filter out this, okay, then perhaps there is some savings. Okay, and of course, you have to analyze you know how that saving is going to happen. Right? In other words, when we have these points, right? suppose this is my median line, I would the final uh, so I want to find out that to the right of this median line, okay, what is the maximum y what is the maximum uh, y coordinate okay. and for that do I have to sort? No, right. I only need to find the median which takes order n time. Okay. By the way, I forgot to mention that you know. So, this order n term, this order n term not only contains, uh, not only cons uh, has the component for merging, but also has uh, the median, finding the median, right. Median plus merging, it has both these components. So, uh, I can find the median in, uh, in, in linear time okay. and after having found the median, I can uh, separate out all these points. I need not know the you know the relative ordering of those points. I know the right half of the points and once I know the right half of the points, I can find the maximum y coordinate. Right? If I can find the maximum y coordinate, the whole thing is order n. So, in order n time, okay, I know essentially what is the maximum y coordinate to the right which is which amounts to saying that I actually know where the staircase is going to cross this median line, because the shape is such that it is a falling staircase. So, essentially what we know is that the median line is going to intersect the staircase here. Okay. So, we have actually computed some part of the output, because this thing, let me use red. So, this thing actually is a part of the final out final staircase. Now, once I know this, okay, then all these things basically disappear. Right. So, all these things basically disappear and then I continue doing the same. So, I, I know this information okay, uh, and of course, you know with this I can also maybe uh, you know eliminate this some points here also that is fine, I can eliminate these points also. And then I have to find the remaining staircase, I have to find out you know what is the remaining staircase which is basically you know something like this. So, I have to now compute the staircase here to right and compute staircase to left and whatever comp uh, I compute the, the left, left staircase that I compute will survive. Okay. That is the beauty of it. Now, I do not have to do any merging, I just stick them together. It is like something like the quick sort, you know. If I once I have found the partitioning element, okay, I know these the, the points larger than that, I know the points smaller than that, and I just paste them together. I do not have to merge like you do in merge sort. So, 
Similarly, here I do not have to actually find out whether the left staircase will survive. It will survive. I simply have to paste it together. Okay. So, that becomes trivial. All right. So, this is the algorithm. So, uh, I, I, I compute, so I, mean I just write down the steps, find the median, okay. then find the, uh, find the uh, intersection of the staircase with median and eliminate all points below it and to its left okay and then compute staircase of left compute the right staircase yes, and that is it, you are done. You know, finally, the output is simply just uh, joining these two staircases. Fine, it is easily stated, you can also write a program. The challenging part is how do you analyze this. What can we write? I mean, when you have to analyze this, what do we write? So, so T of n is the time to compute the entire staircase, okay, and that is essentially uh, the order n that you require for finding the median, okay, finding the where the staircase intersects, intersects the median, okay, and then. Uh, T of n L plus T of n R, you know, left hand side, right hand side. Right. All we know is that n L and n R both are of them are less than n over 2, but then we do not know exactly what the values are, we do not know what the values are, and that is what actually complicates matters. You know, if you do not know what the values are, then I, I if I write t's of n over 2 plus t's of n over 2, we are back to this. Thing, okay. So, there is something else that should come into this, right. something else that should come into the our our calculation or analysis and our intuition was that something it has got something to do with the output size. Okay. So, this recurrence does not capture anything about the output, it is still talking about the set of input points, n input points. Okay. And uh, uh, then again, when we are doing on the left and right half, we are only applying the recurrence to the points that survive in the left half and the points on the right half. Right. We have nothing more than um, so. This is the best that we can do if we write the recurrence in terms of input. So somehow we'll have to bring in the notion of output here. Okay. So for that, I will do the following. I'll say suppose H is the size of final output okay h is not known we don't know h okay. but then i can maybe just say if the running time is a function of both input and output i should actually now make my recurrence a little bit more complicated so time for input size h sorry n and output size h. Okay. So, this again the order n term remains order n, okay. but now I can say something like t's of n l comma h l let us say plus t's of n r comma h r okay and then what do we have yeah i surely have this condition n l 
n r are both less than n over 2. Okay. There is something more I can say about H L and H R. What can I say? Yeah. So, H L plus H R okay, equal to H minus 1 because we have found one uh, stair, one, one stair of the staircase. Now, this recurrence, okay, you know, if you look into it, I, you know, I, I maybe I should actually ask you to uh, try to solve this, okay, but I will give you the solution. Okay. Now, how you solve this? We you know you take it as an exercise. Okay, how you are going to solve it? How does one solve such recurrences? The solution to this happens to be how you are going to verify this. You know, I leave it up to you. How do you solve? You may not have seen such recurrences before. Now, if you look closely at this solution n log h, okay, what is the maximum value of h? n, right. So, the maximum running time is n log n, which is what we found out even by doing this lower bound argument and, and also the other algorithms give us n log n. When h is small, for instance, h is constant, this is order n. So, it, it interpolates nicely between all kinds of output sizes, small to large. All right. Not only that, you know, you can also show, you know, this is something that you know is outside the scope of the discussion right now. Can be shown that this is optimal with respect to input and output. Oh, sorry, output sizes. Okay. So we'll stop here today.